Hey, look at here. I'm gonna allow a little bit there. Same thing up top. Everything is good, all right? Main thing I want is a clean break, all right? So body's in Olympia. Watch the low blows, all right? And I want the head used in the wrong way. Touch these gloves up. Always interesting when you get unbeatens matched up at this stage of a career. 13 and 0 versus 13 and 0. Tim, you say there's a little bit of danger going up against Matias. What is it about him that you like? Well, I believe that Matias has a real good shot here. I mean, Dadashev has been down twice in his career, and, has, and that shows us that he has a you know a little bit of a chin problem. You know, I will not be surprised if Dadashev goes down early in this fight because you know the punching power and the pressure of Matias can be a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, Matias has like very little regard for defense. He believes in his offense to the point to where his offense is his defense. I think this is Matias' fight to lose. He's the favorite. He's got the deeper amateur background, but Matias is unbothered by all of that. In the build-up to the fight, he said this is a big test for the Russian. He didn't say it was a big test for himself. That's the mentality that you have in Matias. You think it would be the right mentality to take an approach in a fight like this? It is the right yeah. approach. It needed test. You know, you got to be a dog in there, man. You got to switch the switch it on the beast mode. You got to eat him. And that's what Matias is coming to do. He's coming to take out that Ashev. Power punching prospect trying to take a big leap to top contender status. Just his second fight in the continental U.S. Ten fights back home in Puerto Rico. You can see the amount of pressure that Matias is putting on. Darashev, and you see who has the better movement. That's Darashev. You know, he's a little bit more versatile than Matias. But you see the hard shots right there to the head and body from Matias. You can hear a thud and a pop at the end of those punches. There was a short left hand there, and now work on the inside and show a little more hand speed as Matias. Darashev punching between punches. Matias getting the work rate up here in the middle of round number one. Buddy McGirt was a great fighter, but he's also a great trainer. And he comes from the old school. He's about setting your shots up, taking three or four rounds to try to get yourself together. And I know with him facing a big puncher in Matias, he's told the Dashev to let him to get some of the steam out of him, box him, be smart, and we'll pick it up as the fight progresses. Right now, Matias is, he has Dadashev right where he wants him. He's pressuring him, he has him using his legs, burning a lot of energy, and slowly getting to him. Good buzzing opening round for Matias. End of one scheduled for 12. As Tadashev will head back to the corner. And there is James Buddy McGirt, the Hall of Famer, the trainer, and a former Listen, world champion himself as an IBF okay, junior welterweight. You come back here, okay? Don't play into his game. Now listen, every time you get close, hit him with one body shot. Just one, right now. One and get out. What are you to do? Huh? What are you to do? Keep your jab going. Keep doing what you're doing. But now listen, yes, just keep them turning. Don't go to the ropes, don't go in the corner. Keep your jab going, keep them turning. You get close to him, one body shot right now, just one. Then go. He starts throwing a lot of punches, you get out, don't stay there. Okay? Okay, let's go. Nice deep breath, very good. Stay smart. Stay smart, I got it, I got it. Buddy McGirt, of course, probably a little reflective this week. With the loss of Pernell Whitaker tragically. Fought Sweet Pea two times. We'll talk plenty about Whitaker coming up a little later as Max will lead a conversation. So we remember the greatness that he was. Interesting to hear Buddy talk to 
the Dashev there. He said when you get close, just get him one body shot yep. in there. What was that all about, Tim? He wants him to get one body shot because he doesn't want him to go two and get expose himself to the big puncher, Matias. That's the reason why. And he wants to weaken Matias slowly by digging down to the body. Better work with the jab now with the Dashev. Sometimes you can throw too many punches and you can be countered. You'll leave yourself available to be hit with a counter. There was the right hand to the body that he wanted to see when he closed that gap. I think Buddy McGirt is reiterating what I talked about in the first round, that to break down a puncher and a guy who is a seek and destroy guy like Matias is, it goes in stages. You don't throw combinations in the first half of the fight. You throw ones, twos, then all of a sudden twos and threes starts landing, and then as the guy starts to weaken, you start to pick up the pace. I think that's what Buddy was trying to tell yep. the Dashev. There's another right hand to the body and then a jab to the body from Mad Max. There's a thudding left hand on the inside from Matias. Mad Max is doing a great job with his movement and occasionally throwing combinations. And he's dropping that jab down to the body, trying to bring the hands down Let of Matias. Look for a shot, a counter shot over the top from Tarashev. He's setting it up with the jab to the body. And on tape, Matias doesn't really look like a 13-0, 13 knockout guy. He looks like a guy who has to get the knockouts or the stoppages by sheer volume. But when you hear these punches tonight, they're loud. Even the ones that hit the arm, you can hear them. He's, he's a heavy puncher. He is. And he's putting a massive amount, a, a massive amount of pressure yes. on Darashev. Yes. And you might think, well, you know, Matias is not landing a lot. He's not throwing a lot, but it's his presence. His yes. presence alone is going to start draining the Dashev if the Dashev is not careful. Then the Dashev have to worry about all the punches coming at him at the same time, plus the movement. Mm. Good exchange there. No, this definitely, this fight can boil down to the battle of attrition. You know, the guy that really paid attention and lost the weight properly. Bernardo Osuna has a special guest. Thank you, Joe. Shakur Stevenson, you improved to 13-0 last week with the knockout of Alberto Guevara. You have a world title shot leading up to you, but really, how do you think that plays out? Who do you think will give you the chance to fight for a world title? Honestly, I want to fight Oscar Valdez. I feel like it's time for uh, me and Oscar Valdez to square off. That's the biggest fight uh, at the 126 division. I feel like and I feel like it'd be perfect for me to take the title from the champion. All right, so I saw you coming in here getting a lot of love from the fans. What reaction has surprised you the most since your knockout win, your fifth knockout in your last seven wins? Uh, I definitely enjoy getting uh, the support from the fans. Uh, I live here in the DMV area. Um, a lot of people here support me, and I will definitely fight here one day uh, if that time had came. Why are you here tonight? Uh, I just came here to enjoy some fights. Um, see Tia, Tia Fimo Lopez do his thing and uh, wish him nothing but success. Thank you very much, Shakur. Two of the brightest prospects in the same building, a week apart. Two of the great young stars in the game. As last week, Shakur Stevenson, his first headlining appearance of an ESPN card. And now Tiafimo Lopez gets that this week here. The Lopez Nakatani coming up. IBF lightweight world title eliminator. The main event here at MGM National Harbor. Round number three, Dadashev and Matias. In order for Dadashev to slow Matias down, he's got to pick his jab up. Different rhythms, different cadences. Sometimes throw a single power jab, slip in, tie up, and move out. Sometimes throw a flicking jab, mm -hmm. throw a right hand behind it, throw the jab to the stomach. The left hand is going to slow down Mat Matias. The Dashev has thrown 63 jabs, only landing 17% of them. Punch output is all Matias, as you would expect, and you can see the pressure he's applying. To this point, 163 punches thrown to 103. Oh, look at his hand. He was hand alone. Oh, a lot of these rounds are hard to really, you know, score. 
because you got one guy moving forward, letting his hands go every time he gets close, and you have the other guy boxing and catching, you know, catching his opponent with clean shots. And that's that Ashes. And also sneaking body shots in, like Buddy said earlier, even ones and twos early on will slow down Matias. Good jab right there. Sure was. Dadashev. Could see how it made Matias hesitate there and stop and deal with it. Yes. He's also circling to his right, staying away from the power of Matias in doing so. Looks like a cut on the right eye of Matias. And Matias is such a bruising puncher, man. He just hits you anywhere. He hits you on the side. He hits you on the arm. Doesn't look like much, but it adds up as the fight progresses. Now he has to worry about a cut. That's the jab right there. That power jab is what the Dashev needs to keep throwing. Great power jab from the Dashev. Seems like he's controlling this round right now, Dre. Because he picked that jab up. Good, good movement. Coming off the jab and nice little short combinations. Now Dashev, he's trying to stay in the inside and try to smother Matias. Punches. Both men jabbing to the body. Matias has that cut around the right eye that they will be dealing with here at the end of three. Now leave it alone, leave it alone. Hey, we've got to put in the work here. You've got to always try to land, even if it's to the chest. You're giving him too many chances, and he can be up on the card. You've got to be on top of him. Listen to me, you got to be smart. Come on, you're doing well, but let's be smart. Here are the instructions from Casalina Matos, the trainer for Subriel Matias. Matias from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Kenny Chavier, veteran referee of this area, is going to ask for them to remove some of the grease. And they barely are, so he's just sliding it off a bit. And Chevalier will have them continue on. That will help deal with that cut that opened up in the third round. So, Dre, you said earlier this is a this is a guy, an undefeated fighter at 13 and over 13 knockouts who utilizes his offense really as his defense, as he doesn't really care to do otherwise. And then you listen to his corner and it falls right in line with that kind of thinking. Saying you're giving him too many chances, you have to be right on top of them, right on top of them. They want more punches. They want more pressure. Yeah, Matias is... Uh, defense has actually been okay tonight. He's He has his own style. He keeps his hands in tight because he's more interested, like I said earlier, about his offense. But he needs to pick his jab up. The same instructions that I have for Dadashev, I have the same ones for Matias. Pick your jab up, and then you can get those studying body shots and head shots off a lot cleaner. You know, that pressure, that cruise style that Matias has, you know, it's worked for him in 13 fights. Right now, he's fighting against a great boxer puncher and Dadashev, and there's a possibility that he may be down on the scorecards early right now, and he's gonna have to make some sort of adjustment. And I'm unsure if he can box, Dre. T is dealing with all that movement. Yep. So he continues to allow him to circle to his right. Stay away from that power. Doesn't cut off the ring. Doesn't cut the ring off. Doesn't throw the punch where he believes the, his opponent's gonna be. He's reaching with shots, and I'm talking about Matias in spots. 
putting a lot of pressure on Dadashev, but Dadashev is staying moving, moving around a lot, and occasionally popping a nice little jab. Nice combination right there. Then goes one, two, then comes back with it. What we see here is two guys who are seemingly evenly matched, but one is one dimensional in Matias and one is multi dimensional in Dadashev. And right now, the boxer is getting the better of it. I would love to see the body work of Dadashev pick up a little bit. Maybe drop, drop a little left hook to the body occasionally. Yes. I agree with that. Oh, he hurt him with that shot. And you see that right eye still bleeding. Wondering if the blood is starting to drip down in the eye of Matias. Right on the corner. Well, blood is coming down. Grease is gone at this point. Ten seconds. Stuck on the bell. Stop, stop, stop! Stop, stop, here we go. Doubling up that left hand stop. was the Dashev. Well, you mentioned the need to utilize the jab and be effective with it. Beautiful jab right there. Didn't land very, very hard, but it, it kept Matias off balance. Another jab, it just makes the puncher think, makes him reset. That's the whole point of the left hand. Then the Dashev started bringing in the power jab, and Matias, it stopped him in his tracks, and once again, it made him reset, and it also gave the Dashev some time to get out of harm's way. Okay, you busting him up, okay? Best punch of that last round was the right hand by the Dashev. A, a jab that missed, blinded Matias, and the right hand landed clean. Another angle right here landed right on the chin, but credit to Matias, he took it well. But you see the defense after that, Dadashev rolling underneath. That's exactly what you're supposed to do when you let the right hand go because the hook is going to come. Great offense and great defense afterwards. Kenny Chevalier takes a look at the grease again on the cut. Let's it go. Body work to start this round from Matias. Can't be mad at the cut man either. I mean, you glob that on there. You try to help your fighter. Make the referee do his job. <laughs> That's right. Stop the cut. That's your job. Matias grew up in Puerto Rico with five siblings, three brothers, two sisters. He's the only boxer in the family. He says a couple street fighters, but I'm the boxer. Started at age 12, had a decent amateur career, 100 fights. And I told you the story of the trouble he got into. Mm. Was shot in 2012, went away, served time, including time at a federal prison in Georgia. Goes to the body well there. Digs in with that right hand one more time under the left elbow of Dadashev. Now those body shots right there, that's what's going to break down Dadashev. He cannot continue to take that type of punishment to the body. Let's find out what Buddy McGirt thinks of it. Bernardo's with him. But you can see the experience from your fighter, Maxim Dadashev. What's he doing right so far? Keeping the guy turning, not standing in front of him. We got to keep this guy turning. This guy is strong, so we got to keep him turning and not let him get set. What adjustments should we expect from Maxim as the fight goes on? Uh, we're going to, you know, inside I got him touching the guy to the body a little more. And then, you know, each round, you know, move less and less. Because I know this guy's got to slow down eventually. If not, we'll be here all night. Circling and running. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll let you get back to work. Thank you very much. Come on, don't leave it out there. Bring that jab. Bring that hand back. Vicious body attack this round, like you mentioned earlier, Tim, from Matias. And that's why you see, see Dadashev slow down right now. We thought Dadashev was going to do that to Matias, but Matias has done it to Dadashev. Andre talked about the Dashev's two dimensions to Matias's one. I think it's well said, but nothing that the Dashev has done has been able to discourage Matias to this point. Combination from Matias by far his best round that we have seen tonight. And the body work put him in position for it. There he goes again with the right hand to the belt line. It will close that gap to the inside. He's oh, sorry. and there's a left hand. That was quite effective Matias, from the Puerto Rican fighter. Test. Matias is starting to get to Dadashev right now. 
in this round. Started with the body work early. Now he's hitting with small little short little left hooks to the head. And Dadashiv is trying to get out, but not quick enough. You can see the confidence rising up here in this back half of round number five. Very, very good round for Matias. Now, this is how you slow down to your opponent. You want to dig down to the body, and that's exactly what Matias is doing against Dadashev. Bringing combinations to the head and also to the body. But the body work, this is what changed the tide. He made an adjustment, which was Matias, to slow down Dadashev's movement and to take some of the gas out of the tank. Got to see what type of adjustments that Dadashev's going to make in this round. See them once again tending to the cut over the right eye. A young man who grew up back home admiring the great Felix Tito Trinidad, national hero. Boy, was he something. Of course, there's such current unrest in Puerto Rico. We asked him about it yesterday. It was top of mind for Matias. He simply turned to us and exclaimed, Ricky, resign. Right now, if he stays this course, he could be putting himself in position to potentially be another Puerto Rican star. 13-0 with 13 knockouts. And here in a title eliminator against Adashev. Fellow unbeaten, a Russian who lives in the L.A. area. He's been hooked up with Buddy McGirt as the trainer now for the second time. And he's part of Egis Klimas' mega stable. And many consider probably the most powerful people in all of boxing right now when you think about being the manager for the three-division world champion, pound-for-pound pound elite, Vasily Lomachenko, Sergei Kovalev, and Alexander Vozdik. And Welterweight contender Igas Kavayaskis. There's so much that goes through that stable. In Matias's corner, Catalino told me, I can see the fact that we're pressuring well. He's got to continue to go to the body, but my guy is really slow in getting his hands back, and that's why he's getting counter. He needs to work on that, but I believe that Max is slowing down, and we can get him soon. Thank you, Bernardo. Now he's holding that left hand behind the head. He's going to get the warning from Kenny Chavalier. You know, I just appreciate how calm Dadashev is. He's not a panicking. I mean, he's moving just enough, getting out at range, using the extension jet with the jab, and occasionally landing a right hand, just like there, on Matias. Matias is asking some serious questions from Dadashev right now. Dadashev is going to have to bite down and get some respect if he's going to be allowed to box. Big shots are landing, and that's the thing when you're a big puncher like Matias, you don't have to throw hard, and you don't have to land clean. You just throw, and those punches start to add up. They're adding up right now uh, for Mat Matias. Mm. And once again, he's got that offhand behind the head at times. You can hear the warning being barked out from the referee. There was a left hand to the body. Vicious body shots. Another can... good body shot. There are the total punches thrown. Look at the work rate of Matias, 523 to 274. Now, granted, he's not as efficient, landing 22%. But the body work in these middle rounds is taking its toll. We come to the end of round number six. Matias has never been past the sixth round of a fight. There is the aforementioned Igis Klimas. So many Eastern European, California-based stars turn their career over to Egis, including the guy on the top of that list, Usyk, who is obviously a dominating cruiserweight. And now he's going to be contending as a heavyweight. 
Sergey Kovalev, we will see him in action on August 24th from Russia on ESPN Plus against the undefeated mandatory challenger Anthony Yard. And of course, the great Vasily Lomachenko a week later from London with three lightweight belts on the line, which folds right into Pegasus' other job here tonight, aside from watching Dadashev and seeing if his fighter baby, can stay smart. unbeaten. And that is monitoring what will happen with Teofimo Lopez, as that is a key piece to the puzzle of the lightweight division. The title eliminator for the wildly exciting Teofimo Lopez will be coming in, but our main event against 18-0 Masayoshi Nakatani. Win that fight, and you move on to fight for a lightweight belt against Richard Comey. The winner of that fight, it would be undisputed, most likely against Lomachenko, pending what happens on August 31st in London. Interesting comment from Buddy McGirt between rounds. Listen to this. Crowd, okay, don't look for the knockout. Just keep working your jab, double, triple your jab, you understand me? And keep them turning, that's all you gotta do. Okay? You think Buddy thinks he's getting off course a little bit, looking for the one punch, trying to get some more Absolutely. consistent work? Yeah, I don't see Dadashev looking for a knockout. I see Dadashev trying to survive. Like, he doesn't have answers right now. Uh, he's being stalked. He's being walked down from Matias. And he's being busted up. You can see the reddening on the side of the body of Dadashev. I don't think he's looking for a knockout. He's looking for answers. Far more pronounced what you just noted there, Dre, in the last two rounds. When you look at that left flank, you see... Severe redness that is developed there. And every time Matias goes down to the body, you can just see it just sucking the life out of Dadashev. And it slows him down. Mm. See, these are moments in a fight where, yeah, you got a game plan. You want to respect your coach. You've been in camp for eight weeks or however long. But this is one of those moments where you tell your coach, I got this. I'm going to go out here and get my respect back, and then I'll get back to the game plan. And right now, Dadashev is not doing that. I don't see the jab from the Dashev. I don't see the intent from the Dashev. I see a guy in survival mode right now. He might be taking this round off. He must have took the last three <laughs> off. <laughs> he might be taking this round off, man. That's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to deal with. I mean, mental pressure, too. Yes. You know, to stay in this fight, Dre, for Dashev. But he's got to find the answers that he's looking for if he's going to graduate. This is this is an eliminator for the IBF. If he's going to move on to bigger and better things and realize his full talent, he's got to find some answers and find them quick. Well, we're going to find out tonight if, it, you know, what he's really been training for his whole entire life is what he truly believes. He's going to have to figure it out. And I'm talking about that, I share. Matias continues to find success here in these middle rounds. Coming to the end of round seven, a chance to check in with Max. The da the Dashev is a good boxer. He's a technical boxer, but he's trained by Buddy McGirt. And Buddy McGirt was a throwback fighter, an old school fighter. Even when he fought in the 80s and 90s, he plied his trade so often coming up in the club circuit on Long Island fighting every kind of style. McGirt was also an excellent boxer, but he was fluid. Everything came out automatically, and Dadashev looks to me to be a guy paint by number. He has to do everything just so, and he's mechanical, and not nearly like his now teacher, Buddy McGirt. The guy who looks natural is Matias. You wouldn't know that was the first time he's seen the seventh round. He doesn't fight like a guy who's going just for the knockout. He seems perfectly relaxed. In and Dadashev, who has power against guys coming into him, Matias does not seem bothered by that. He's natural as the aggressor, aggressor from round one, not scared. Big opportunity for Matias. There is a, a, a relative dearth of Puerto Rican champions right now. If this is an eliminator, he's putting himself in great shape. See if he can continue that way here, guys, as we start round number eight. He did make the comment to us yesterday. He said this fight will absolutely not go the distance. 
There's Dre's card, 67-66. Matias up, sweeping the last three rounds. And trying to sweep to that belt line again. That is where he has been most effective. The right hand to the body and reddening the left side of the body of Dadashev. There he goes again, flush with the mm. body punch there. Mm, that hurt. That definitely hurts. By far the most effective punches of this fight have been the body shots of Matias. You know, Matias is not doing anything special. All he's doing is coming, stocking, putting a massive amount of pressure on Dadashev. You know, and sometimes you can have all the skills in the world, but once that pressure gets to you, it kind of goes out the window. Sometimes, you know, having that pressure kind of trumps the skill set and ability. And we're seeing that right before our eyes right now. When that pressure hits and that, you know, that resistance hits, you got one or two things you're going to do. Either you're going to fold or you're going to rise. And right now, I'm not seeing Dadashev rise. He still has room to rise, but thus far, I haven't seen it. I'm really impressed with Matias. 13-0, 13 knockouts. You kind of assume it's a guy who's reckless and just looking for the knockout, but he's shown poise. He's shown better defense than I thought he was going to show, and he looks like the guy who's been this late in a fight before, and he really hasn't. And he looks like a guy who hasn't lost, where you fight with just a certain level of confidence yes. and belief in yourself. Got that and that matters. Sure. That matters right. a lot. That does matter. The ref keeps saying, get off the head. Hey, stop, what he's stop. saying is, Matias is pushing the head down of Tarashev with his right, with his actually his left glove. This actually would have been a good round for Tarashev to assert himself because I think Matias is actually taking this round off. Not really as offensively, you know, effective as he's been the last three or four rounds. It's a nice little turning from that Dadashev. That's what Buddy wanted to see more of. That's the best way to fight a pressure fighter, is keep turning them in circles. Right hand on separation from Matias. End of eight. And you know who's coming up in the main event. It is the takeover. The 21-year-old unbeaten, Tiafimo Lopez. There he is hitting the pads with Dad. One of the most dynamic fighters in the game today. Or Timmy, as you said, electrifying with probably one of the most outspoken characters in the game, his father slash trainer. And he is ready to put on a show, he says. Seen that backflip time and again, as well as all the Fortnite dances. And he said, I'm going to win by knockout tonight, and I have a special celebration that he has cooked up. But of course, opposite Tiafimo Lopez is Masayoshi Nakatani, who is a six foot tall, unbeaten lightweight from Osaka, Japan. That is a title eliminator. A chance to fight Richard Comey, very dangerous puncher who has really blossomed in the course of the past year. Fellas, the only thing Matias needs to be a champion, a jab. He's got the body punches That's down pat, doesn't he? That's exactly what he needs to do. Look at this work right here to open up round number nine. This is a will thing right now. This isn't a skill thing. Oh, doubles up the left hand. Good work there, and then fires a straight right that splits the guard as the Dashev is forced to stand in front and trade. It's about great conditioning, will, and a battle of attrition. The Dashev is trying to make a stand right now, and Matias is not budging. He's letting the Dashev know the first five or six rounds was not a fluke. Tonight is going to be my night. That's the body language that I see from Matias. 
Buddy McGirt told me in the corner that Maxim Dadashev told him, this guy can punch. And he said, look, you need to throw more punches, not one shot at a time. You got to chop them down and keep turning. The body work just continues to rein in from Matias. Dadashev trying to find something in between these punches, willing to stay in the pocket. But you can see these thudding blows coming in. And he's wrapping around the guard. Mad Max able to land a right hand. Most entertaining round we've seen. But damage being taken by Dadashev. And there's another left hand that comes into the body. Matias is breaking Dadashev right now. Dadashev will land a good right hand Uppercut. every so often. And Matias is walking through it and landing four or five shots to the body. Then he has the heavier hands. Look at the redness on the left side of the body, wrapping all the way around to the backside on the Russian. Look at the arms too, Tess. His yes, arms the arms beat as well. From Matias. Look at the left elbow, Dre. How red that is from trying to block some of these body punches, and don't think that doesn't take a toll. Everything on the body is a target. That's what young fighters forget. They look for the clean shot instead of just hitting what's there. You hit the shoulder. You hit any. Wherever they're giving you. And right now, Matias has Dadashev fighting his fight. He wants Dadashev to sit in front of him. This is what the Dadashev camp was worried about. Vicious Ooh. left hook to the body from Matias. It's an excellent him. round for Sabriel Matias. Okay, Max, take a deep breath and let it out slow. Let it out slow. Okay, Max, listen, you got to go to his body a little more to slow him up. Okay, everything you're throwing is to the head. Come on, nice deep breath and let it out slow. Let me get the water. Hey, hey, listen to me, champ. Listen to me. Okay, nice deep breath and let it out slow. Okay, listen to me here. Drink this. Inside, Max, you can't take those body shots. You got to turn them. And dig his body. Okay, go to his body for one round. Okay, he's doing to you what you should be doing to him. You understand? Nice me? uppercut right here. Down to the body first, and then split the guard. You see that Ashev head leaning over the front knee, and Matias making him pay. And here's a nice right hand by that Ashev as Matias tried to pull away and left himself open, dropping his hands. And just how the 10th round you figure would open up as Matias steps to Dadashev and lands a big body punch. Buddy McGirt said to Dadashev, he is doing to you what you need to be doing to him. You can't take these body shots. Turn him and you dig to the body. When you don't have the physicality, the physicality or the, the physical strength to be able to stand there and trade with your fighter, you have to move your legs. Dadashev is sitting right in the pocket, trying to smother the power, but he's getting hit on full extension down to the body. Early on, he was circling. He was boxing on the outside. He was trying to utilize and stop and pop with the jab. Made the decision about a round and a half ago to stand in the pocket and absorb punishment in the middle rounds. It's been all Matias and so strong with the body attack. Yes, he can't do that, Tess. He cannot do that. He's fighting Matias's fight right now. Fellas, body shots, they weaken you, they take your legs, mm. they steal your conditioning, and they take away your punching power. It's the kryptonite of every fighter. Come on, fellas, you're resting. Hands are You see the legs of Dadashev, they yes. do not look stable not right now. Not at all. all. Nope, tried to cross over and nearly lost his footing. Dadashev right now is, is fighting on fumes right now. He's tired, he's exhausted, he's trying to dig down deep, and he's going down to Matias' body right now. Trying to make something happen, but Matias is so determined and strong in there. You know who the physically strong guy is. Dadashev is still dangerous with that right hand. Every time he throws it, he lands it clean. So far, Matias is, has uh, taken it well, uh -huh. but he's got to be he's got to be careful because the Dashev can't punch. Some new territory for Matias. 
never been in the championship rounds at all. Mm, vicious combo right there from Matias. Mm, got him hurt. Separation, and he fills it with a combination. Oh, there's a right uppercut on the inside. He wants this kind of fight. Oh, he smells blood right he now. He does. He's stepping to him. He's got a little bounce to him. He knows that I he's coming off. The, he's coming off the hip with right hands. Yes. This is a different little bounce and attack from Matias. And I like what Matias is doing. He's taking some power off to get himself in position, and then he unloads with the power all over again. Way to change up the cadence on his punches. And another right hand to the body. Backs him up with a left hand. Mm. Oh, Ooh. good shot to the belt line to close out round 10 here. Matias in control. Come on now. Come on now. He can go on the stadium. He can go on the stadium. Give him some water in his mouth. Come on, the people are watching you back home who believe in you. Prove what you're capable of. Come on, we got to get to work. You have to be right on top of him. Close the gap. You got two more rounds left. You know you have to win these last two rounds. Come on, this is for the people back home. Take a deep breath. Put water in the mouth. By the way, give credit to the cup man, Angel Guevara, for managing that right eye that opened up in the third round. Put position for Matias to take control of this fight. And they're going to deal with the tape on the left glove there. Come here, come here, come here. I got it. Don't worry about it. Shit, I'll get this. <laughs> he got his own tape. Kenny Chavalier yeah, takes out the scissors, oh. deals with it himself. Veteran referee. That's right. And Matias gets right back to work in the kitchen. Mm. Another left hand digging, digging with uppercuts, and now sweeping up top, going with headshots at range, and he can sense it. And you heard the motivational call. There's going to have to stop for another tape issue on that left hand. And you heard Chalier say, get that tape ready. Doesn't want to stop the action. No, he doesn't. Not when they're trading on the inside. He's going to wait for a lull in the action or separation or pause. And you see Matias right now no, no, taking a little bit of steam off. Of, okay. A little steam off the punches right now. You get deeper into a fight, and there's more moisture and sweat, and it starts to affect the tape. And you will often see, instead of doing what they're doing right here, let's taking the exterior, there, almost go. duct tape, and put it right over the regular tape. All right, let's go. Over there, let's go. Matias is upset yeah. right now, and the reason he's upset is <laughs> because know. he's got the Dashev going, he has momentum, and he's breaking the momentum to fix a tape issue on the gloves. Some more body shots. sense that the corner of Matias knows where they're at. They were really trying to motivate him of, hey, just push for two more rounds. Do it for the people back home of Puerto Rico. This thing is right there for the taking. Beautiful tap, tap, then vicious body shot from Matias. The Dasha was just looking for that one good shot that can land to the body or the head. And the Dash, excuse me, Matias, and the Dasha is going to have some issues because he's wilting right now. Short right hand on the inside from the Russian. There's nothing, no power, no speed coming from Dadashev at all. He just got all. sent off balance with a short right uppercut. He's literally right now fighting on autopilot. He is hurt. Oh, good jab to the stomach. Didn't sure look was. like much, but it meant a whole lot physically. Varying the body attack is Matias. Stabbing shot, that jab yep. to the stomach. Much like the way Teofimo Lopez, who we'll see in moments, scored his knockout at Madison Square Garden back in April. A straight right hand to the body. Darashev is taking a lot of punishment in this fight. Yes, he is. You know, you worry about your young fighter taking this much punishment. 
this early in his career. You know, if I was in this corner, I would be thinking about stopping Uppercut, the fight. headshot, splits the guard. 13-0, 13 knockouts, and here he is in the 11th round looking for number 14. Oh, another big shot comes in. He's hurt. He hurt. He is hurt here at the end of 11. Undefeated Dadashev is in a tough spot. Gets sent back. We'll listen in to what Buddy McGirt has to say to him here. Stop it, Max. Okay? I'm going to stop the fight. Max, I'm going to stop it. Max, you're getting hit too much. You're getting hit too much, Max. Please, Max, please, let me do this, okay? Okay? Look at me. Please. Please, you're getting hit too much, Max. If I don't, they're going to do it. You understand me? If I don't, the referee's going to do it. Please. Please, Max. Come on, Max, please. Come on, you, you got to be honest with me, Max. Doc, actually stop it, Doc. That's it. That's it. Great job. A TKO victory too much, baby. for Subriel Matias. And in the corner, the first loss being digested for Dadashev. And understand this. What you just were a first-hand witness to with Buddy McGirt and his fighter is exactly what this sport is supposed to be caring for the yes. health and welfare of these brave, courageous combatants. That is what a professional trainer is, exactly is charged with. I and it was very that. hard for Dadashev to accept it and to listen to it. But that is exactly what should have happened. That's exactly why you have a world-class trainer in your corner, to know it's for the safety and the well-being of you. Buddy McGurk did a great job right there. Yes, he did. That last round, that 11th round, Matias was teeing off. He was hitting at will. In that round, he threw 142 punches. 142 and landed 53. 53 of 142 when you've been pounding a guy from the fifth round on with body shots. Enough. Enough. He's a monster for this division. I like him a lot. Listen, he's one-dimensional, but it's a good one-dimension oh to have, Dre. He's and it's perfected a, that one. And it's a really fun division now, isn't it, at 140 pounds? Guys, take us through and show us what you like about Sabriel Matias. Matias came in, and he just threw body shots early on. Nothing hard, but he placed them well. The Dashev had plenty of moments early the first three or four rounds, but Matias just kept coming. The Dashev tried to fight him off, but Matias would land shots like that. And like I mentioned, clean, well-placed body shots will start to drain you mentally, but physically, your punches won't be the same, right. your desire won't be the same, and everything you said you fought for, you'll start to question. Absolutely right. And here's the ending right here. Look at those body shots and the head attack. Beautiful uppercuts from Matias, recognizing that his opponent is weakening, continue to punish the body of Dadashev. Wicked body shots. And beautiful stoppage, great stoppage from Buddy. And typically the guys who have the most empathy and sympathy for their fighters are the guys who took those punches and who once fought themselves. Well, let's make it official. Here's Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner informs referee Kenny Chevalier that their fighter is in no condition to continue, obligating him to stop this contest prior to the start of round number 12, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout. From Puerto Rico, still undefeated, Subriel Matias. Remember, this was an IBF junior welterweight world title eliminator. So just like that, Matias goes from being this guy who's down there in Puerto Rico and getting things done at a certain level 
to having this fight against the Dashev and now putting himself in the mix at 140 pounds for what is really shaping up.